Alright, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing Performance. Today I want to talk to you about candida, fungal infections, fungal overgrowths, candida overgrowths. This is kind of the new wave in our industry. Everyone's saying, oh, well, I have a sinus infection. Oh, I have eczema. Um, oh, I'm bloated. I have a fungal infection. Let me take supplements. Well, there's dangers in doing that. There's dangers in taking supplements and not really know what you have because you can have the symptoms quote unquote, of a fungal infection, but you might not have a fungal infection. We do lab tests all the time on people. People come in saying, oh, I know I have a fungal infection, or I know I don't have a fungal infection. Case in point, I'm working with a guy right now, he's got severe digestive problems. We're doing a lot of nutrition and lifestyle coaching, and based on his symptoms, I felt like we really need to do a GI lab to see what was going on in there, what's working, what's not working. Taking a look at the liver, taking a look at the pancreas. Does he have parasites, fungus? And he's like, oh, I did the fungal diet for a year. I know I don't have fungus. I probably have a parasite. Well, he's got a lot going on, but case in point, no parasite, and he's got the highest amount you can possibly have in the lab test for a candida overgrowth. So don't base it on how you feel. You always need a lot of the times, a lot of the times, something analytical, something left brain when we're talking about our physiology in order to see what's going on. So in this one, two, maybe three part series, I want to talk about candida overgrowth, how we get it, why we get it, how to eradicate it, how we might benefit from it, and basically how to remember that, you know, it takes the individual, it's an individual healing puzzle when it comes to eradicating candida, because we all get it for different reasons, and we're going to look at it from a physical perspective, but we're also going to look at it from an emotional perspective and a mental perspective, because we can also get it on that side of it. So from the physical side of it, we all have candida in our gut, okay? And we create the overgrowth. That's the appropriate term. We actually create the environment for it to overgrow. We create a moist, dark, warm place for the fungus to grow. Fungus has been around since before me and actually. That's why it's actually hard to kill. It's actually used in the soil. The plants use it to their benefit in the soil so what the, what the fungi does, there's many types of fungi, but what they typically do is they break down the organic substances in the soil, right, to feed the plants in return for, you know, water or oxygen or energy in a sense. So it's a love in, it's a love relationship, a give and a re-give relationship between the fungus and the soil. So they break things down, they feed the plants water, they feed it minerals and things like that. They feed it sugars. The highest amount of candida in the body is actually found in the gut, okay, or the GI system. And the, my rule of thumb is if people have fungal symptoms that are further from the gut, typically that means the fungal overgrowth or candida overgrowth is more systemic, meaning it's more chronic. And a good example of this is like jock itch or toenail fungus, things like that. Or I've had clients that have fungal infections in their ear and they actually got diagnosed by an MD. We also have fungus in our vaginal tract, not me, but you, some of you, in our eyes, in our mouth, in our ears, in our large intestine, stomach, and esophagus. And we have this because it actually, it's a, it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship. A balance of these different bacterias, as well as with the candida, actually helps to produce certain substrates that feed the gut lining, feed the enterocytes of the gut. Um, at the same time, they help produce short-chain fatty acids that feed the gut. Keep your mouth, your vaginal tract, your eyes, the fluids, all these things healthy, but also protecting it from certain pathogens. So it's a symbiotic relationship. It's when it becomes an overgrowth that it's a problem. Now, what are the, some, some of the symptoms and the side effects? Well, the most common you typically see are, you know, more on the skin. Like rashes, I'm sorry, rashes. Issues with the orifices and things like that, the eyes, the nose, the ears, the, the vagina, the penis. You can also have toenail fungus of any type, jock itch, athlete's foot, as well as ringworm. Ringworm is not a parasite. It's actually a fungus. And it's, you develop little circles, typically on the inside of the groin or on the top of the head, but it's actually a fungus. Another type of fungus that you can get, it's called holly rot. It's typically from Hawaii, but... It's basically those little white sunspots you get in your back, and you see a lot of yoga people have them. Well, you get them usually in the summer from towels that are always moist and things like that, or not, or sweating under your t-shirt. You just develop more of a, a surfacey type fungus, and I'll tell you how to get rid of that later on. But if you want to see the, you know, the a list of a lot of symptoms, go to the link below, and you can see all the major symptoms associated with fungal infections, which is millions of different symptoms. It depends on who we're talking about. 
So don't base it on the symptoms, but at the same time, take a look at this, get some basic education, so you can maybe tune into saying, I think you might have a fungal infection. We might need to do a lab test. We might just want to try the diet before we do supplementation. So how do we get it? We get it mostly from the American crap diet, from too much caffeine and coffee, too much refined processed foods, too much aspartame and alcohol, and too much pasteurized milk. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Mycotoxins or fungus essentially feed on sugar. So if you're eating sugar all the time, you're eating these processed foods, it takes more energy for your body to break down and give you, you're actually feeding the sugar and you're creating a brewery in your gut and you're creating an environment for these um, fungus to actually overgrow. So it's through the foods that we eat, the lifestyles that we live, that actually create the environment for this food to grow. So our entire GI system is set up on a pH system. The mouth is very alkalinic. It should be alkalinic. It should be 7 to 8 pH. The stomach is very acidic. It should be 1 to about 2, 2.5 pH. The small intestine is alkalinic and on and on. That pH system is driven by pH. So we can get it through the foods we eat. We can actually get it from making love to someone who has it. I find women that have chronic yeast infections as well as chronic UTIs, not all the time, some of the time is from their making love with their, you know, man. And every time the guy sticks his penis in the vagina, he actually infects the woman with the bacteria or fungal infection. So making love with someone that has, you know, jock itch, athlete's foot, toenail fungus, or has eczema, rosacea, um, ringworm, you can actually get it that way. Chronic stress, chronic stress of any kind, physical, mental, emotional, chemical, um, electromagnetic, any type of stress. You know, it doesn't matter if you stub your toe, eat sugar, get in a fight, or you sleep underneath a telephone pole. The body reacts to stress in the same way, and stress is catabolic. So when you break the body down, you create a perfect environment for fungus to grow. A suppressed immune system. Cortisol and sugar actually suppress the immune system. Cortisol in excess, I should say. Did you know one teaspoon of sugar actually has been shown to inhibit the immune system for, for four hours? One teaspoon. There's 17 teaspoons in an average can of Coke. Now, I'm not talking a Monster Energy drink, or I'm not talking a Starbucks whip de doo but we're eating foods that are full of sugar and high fructose corn syrup. This is suppressing our immune system. At the same time, 75 to 90% of your immune system is actually housed in the malt system in your body, the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. And this is in the gall, the gut associated lymphoid tissue, the bronchial associated lymphoid tissue, and the duct associated lymphoid tissue. So you have so much of an immune system inside your body and all your tissues, and from the foods we eat, the medications we're taking, the stresses we're under, we're actually suppressing our immune system all the time. Look at the research. Some of the most prominent diseases nowadays are autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases. That means self-fighting self. You're actually at a point in your life where your body can't take it anymore. It's actually giving in to itself because it's under so much stress. Prescription medications and over-supplementation can, can basically create candida. Most people that are on medications have had surgeries or on the female contraceptive. Those, any type of medication, you create the environment for fungus to overgrow. Over-supplementation. I find people are overdoing it on supplements. They live with this for that approach. And what they're doing most common is probiotics. They take probiotics for everything. They could stub their toe and they want to take probiotics. What they're doing is they're actually creating an overabundance of bad bacteria. You can actually create a, instead of a, a dysbiosis or a deficiency dysbiosis, you can create an excess dysbiosis. See this all the time from over-supplementation with probiotics. At the same time, a lot of times what you see is people develop parasitic infections from traveling overseas, from kissing their dog, from eating raw chicken and raw fish and sushi, on and on and on. Well, what happens is the parasite creates the environment for the candida to overgrow from the stressors and the foods. Okay? So that's kind of how we get it physically. Tune in. You're going to get more on this. I'm going to keep going if it takes two, three, four clips. Who knows? But we're going to go over now how to treat it physically um, and look at the, the, you know, the holistic treatment as well as the, um, the more conventional treatment that people are using. And then we're going to go into the emotional side of it, why we get it, how we benefit, and how to treat it. So thanks for tuning in. If you've got questions, visit our website at eastwesthealing.com. If you want to set up a free consultation, give us a call anytime, and I'll check you later.